I'm Ron Rodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to our journey through the real book number 185. Yes, one tune a week. It's been almost four years already. It's an eight year project I took on for myself to challenge myself to play the tunes in the real book in order. This is the sixth edition and it's uh, falling apart, but that's a sign that uh, we use it, right? Um, you know, if I can get back to this. So, um, 185, The Intrepid Fox. Yes, Freddie Hubbard's tune, The Intrepid Fox. And, <laughs> there you go, smooth, right? So, um, hey, that's jazz, improv, right? So, uh, yes, this whole series of uh, jazz piano lessons is to help us learn these standards in a way that uh, gets beyond the notes in the page. Like, what's going on with the tune? Who is Freddie Hubbard? That kind of thing. So, uh, yes, Freddie Hubbard, great, great trumpet player, sort of a, a contemporary colleague of Herbie Hancock. You know, if, if you want to hear the Miles Davis quintet from the 60s with a different trumpet player, like, you know, after um, Herbie stopped playing with Miles, um, check out the stuff with, with Freddie Hubbard, you know, and uh, VSOP, that group with uh, uh, Herbie, Wayne Shorter. It's basically the Miles Davis rhythm section, plus Wayne Shorter and Freddie Hubbard. But uh, they also did a lot of studio albums. And uh, in The Intrepid Fox. You know, we know certain vocabulary words in, in our language, right? English here. Where um, uh, we know what they mean, but maybe we can't quite put it in words. Like intrepid. I would have, you know, thought it was uh, someone um, who was persistent and, you know, going to get it. Going to get it. <clears throat> going to get this. I'm going to do this, you know. And, but I looked it up. I looked up the, dic dictionary, uh, di the dictionary definition right before um, I sat down to make this uh, video. And it was uh, fearless and adventurous. I thought that was wonderful. And it's, it's along the lines of what I was thinking, right? And in a sense, so a fox, you know, the animal, fearless and adventurous. And also, we have to be fearless and adventurous to learn a tune like this. It's not your ordinary garden variety uh, jazz standard. So yes, early 70s, uh, it goes along with that very high energy, fast paced uh, stuff that Herbie and those guys, when they played traditional jazz and not fusion, they would tend to play, you know, like. You know, real, you know, I think Lenny, Lenny White was on drums on this recording pretty sure. And uh, he played with Chick Corea, Return to Forever, you know, real uh, hard driving kind of jazz stuff. And uh, a tune like this will stretch us. It's in C minor, but not really, because it, uh, you know, uh, it, you're not going to find your one, four, and five chords, or your, your two, five, ones are not going to do you any good in a tune like this. It's modal. So what we do is we play the chord, C minor seven, and then we pick a mode to play with it. In this case, it would be Dorian. And then uh, B major 7, sharp 11, it would be uh, Lydian, the changes are down here that you saw on. Lydian, B flat 7, sus 4, would be Mixolydian, and then F7, sus 4, F Mixolydian. So, in other words, Freddie Hubbard wrote a tune that is traditional in that it's A, A, B, A, as a nice bridge. But then um, the chords don't move in traditional ways. And we can approach them modally because we don't have anything else to fall back on. We can't say, okay, well, all these chords are in the key of C minor, so I'll just play a C minor scale like we can in a lot of tunes. Or maybe they modulate to a different key during the bridge. Um, and, and, you know, he knew that too. So even though the tune is pretty complex, the bridge jumps around like... But then he said, okay, for soloing, I'm just going to pick this sequence of four chords. And even that's a little unusual because the C minor 7th is for six measures. The B major 7 sharp 11 is for six measures, not four or eight as we maybe expect. The B flat 7 sus is for six measures, but then the F7 sus 4 is only for four measures. Why didn't he make it six all around? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Sometimes... You know, you lose track of where you are and you add up at, you know, adding a measure or something, you know. Um, but uh, that's part of it too. I remember I spent about four years getting lost every time I played the tune So What because there's a D minor seventh chord for so long. But basically it's six, 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 and four. So what is that? Um, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 22, is that right? 22 measure long 
form. Uh, unusual in itself. Uh, and then NC. It says C minor 7, then NC. That means no chord. So it's just a boom, like a quarter note chord. And then the next two measures, these eighth notes, which go through different. They go through, imply different chords. They're in the clear. It's like a tacit. So it's. And then you come back in with the C minor 7 here. So uh, that's how we approach a tune like this, and uh, here we go. Um, hopefully I will be as fearless and adventurous as the fox in the title.
insane. That's like uh, riding a roller coaster. <laughs> it's like, where is it going now? Okay, hang on to your seatbelt. We're going here, we're going there. And uh, a lot of fun once you uh, get into that sort of world where we're like, okay, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. You got to get some energy. Uh, you can't sort of sit back and relax through a tune like this. So it's a, it's a challenge if, if you don't play these very often. Or if you're more of a ballad person, it will really stretch you to play a tune like this, you know, and um, go into the world of Freddie Hubbard. You know, this is the kind of thing he loved to do. And we can... Um, uh, whether it's our favorite type of music or not, we can learn something by going there. I mean, I love playing modally, so I was able to bring a lot of the things that I like to do modally to the world of Freddie Hubbard and sort of meet it halfway. You know, if, if you noticed, if you've been watching a lot of these uh, real book videos I've been making, um, uh, I, I, I'm definitely uh, of the uh, train of thought that we can meet these tunes halfway. We're not trying to play the Intrepid Fox, just like Freddie Hubbard or Herbie Hancock, who's on the original, or, you know, Invitation, like whoever recorded that, you know, um, or Giant Steps, like John Coltrane. It's, it's, it's finding our way to play these tunes that, that expresses who we are as musical individuals. And that's really what someone like Freddie Hubbard did. Um, you know, he wasn't going to play a, a Wayne Shorter tune just like Wayne Shorter. If you listen to him on those recordings, he's playing like Freddie Hubbard, right? So that's what we do, too. We find out who we are by trying all these different things and then uh, meeting the tunes halfway, so to speak. Thanks for being here. Uh, next week, uh, number 186, standard, very different tune, Invitation, which is the opposite of this, in a sense. It's a traditional. It has two five ones. It's a very uh, standard type of tune. So we're, we're uh, you don't know what you're going to get when you just flip the page in the real book. And we're hitting all eras of jazz here. That's a, I find that really exciting, and I'm glad you're aboard. So uh, good luck with your own playing, and I'll see you in the next video.